What's up, everybody? Welcome to Point Forward, the podcast. This past week, we headed to Boston, had a great sit down with the one and only Jason Tatum. Make sure y'all subscribe to Point Forward wherever you listen to your podcast and follow us on all social channels at Point Forward. As always, Point Forward is presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with code Point Forward. Because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Boy, we're prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. I'm Andre Godala, and I've got my main man, Evan Turner, with me. Hello. Speaking of the in-season tournament MVP, uh, DraftKings odds race, it's quite interesting. We've had some conversation over the past couple of weeks, ET, and uh, the odds that have come back because we are we have shifted into the pool play where the the winning teams and the wild cards have shifted into mm-hmm. the in-season tournament uh, finale, and so. Diving in there and this week's conversation being Jason Tatum, he sits at the top. Any other names kind of pop out to you? I mean, the only name really is Tyrese Halliburton, what he's doing. And uh, I believe right now everybody talks about the scoring and what like type of running he's been going on. But I've always been impressed with the, the, the lack of turnovers that he has. He'll go on mm-hmm. runs of 30. 30 assists, zero turnovers, and mix. right now he's shooting, you know, at a crazy level that, you know, it's comparing him not only to in-season in MVP, but also the league MVP. So I, I like the odds for, you know, Tyrese Halliburton. Well, I'm looking at De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. And he's sitting second in the in-season tournament betting odds by DraftKings at plus 650. Um mm-hmm. De'Aaron Fox is having an incredible year. I think we kind of – he's not being slept on, but he's averaging 30. And I know Oops. we're in a, in, a, in a inflationary times, not just financially, but in the basketball world too. But averaging 30, uh, six and a half assists, and uh, close to five rebounds a game is um, nothing to be too quiet about. And, and the way they've been playing, winning. They stole two games from the Warriors this year. Um, I mean, I, I give the winning team a lot of credit as well, you know, being down 22 points, figuring out a way to win in the second half, um, you know, it's a tall order. Um, once again, I think we're trying to wrap our heads around this Tuesday, Friday thing, you know, we're the MVP of the Tuesdays and Fridays, but, yeah. you know, with the excitement that's been happening in the league, um, you know, he's definitely, and he got hurt too. When he got hurt, yeah. he, he, and he struggled. Yeah. Well, I know what's so crazy about De'Aaron Fox and, like, you talk about perception. Mm-hmm. Because when you think about his athleticism, his quickness, you know what I mean? Like, the scoring ability and all that, like, you can compare it to a Ja Morant. You know what I mean? And when it mm-hmm. comes down to it, I feel like if Ja was doing what De'Aaron Fox was doing, not to get too far ahead of in-season, you know, tournament, but, like, if Ja was doing that, we'd be screaming league MVP and doing that dumbass little dance and going absolutely crazy. And, and we'd be saying... Damn, I would love to see Ja get a jumper. And that's what De'Aaron Fox is right now, is Ja Morant with a jumper and a three-point shot, leading a, a leading the same type of team into unbelievable statuses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I do you like think that. about that? You like that? Yeah. No, just because of, you know, the way he played last year in the playoffs. Like last year in the playoffs, we had to make adjustments on him. And you yeah. know, it says a yeah. lot. When you get when we get to the playoffs, we always spoke about the playoffs to where a lot of guys' games don't translate into the playoffs because it doesn't translate to winning. But he was a guy where he translated in the playoffs, and they had us on the ropes a couple times. Yeah, and for he sure. Was, he was he was part of the reason where we had to we had to change up our coverage a bunch and throw like surprises at him. And most of the time, you can knock a guy out with one type of coverage. Like every time they touch the ball, we're gonna do this to him. Or if Kyle Culver's coming off on this side, you know, we top light him, top lock him. If he's on the other side, then he's not as much of a threat. Just like small details like that, you can counter most guys. But I think that's what separates, you know, the elite, elite, you know, those top 10, 15 guys in the league from the rest is where there, there really is no counter to them. Like you got to throw a bunch of different 
um, you know, a bunch of different actions their way to try to throw them off guard. Well, we have Tatum for the week. You're talking about the top 10 and 15 guys. And I get a question, get a chance to ask Tatum this question. But since Jalen Brown is up there pretty high for in-season tournament, do you put Jalen Brown in the top 10 as well or no? That's a good question. You know, he gets the short end of the stick. For years because, now. Because of the talent of Jason Tatum and, you know, because of – you know, the the dynamic of the team, you know, they either had Marcus Smart, defensive player of the year. You got Drew Holiday, should be defensive player of the year. Um, and then now you got Przingis. So, and then you got Al Holford. He's kind of like the anchor. So you, you got Derek White really killing too, bro. Derek, Derek White, White is killing, like literally killing, like killing. And you know, we know, we, we, we always speak to it. And some guys justifiably, we say, will they be able to do this on their own? You know, we, we see what's what happened with a lot of young guys who go from one team to another. And it's a different it's a different feeling having your own team and being able to succumb to criticism and overcoming it and being in a bad situation on a losing team. And so, you know, we don't place Jalen in that top 10, 15. Uh, but I think it's sometimes your success can work against you. You know, we talked about that with, yeah. with, with Clay and with Draymond for so long. We always... Someone always tried to knock them by saying, well, if you were on the team by yourself, you wouldn't be as good. But I think you just try to appreciate them for where they are and for the runs that they've been on. And to Jalen's credit, if I had to give credit to anybody, just one comparison before we get out of here. If Zach Levine can dip from Minnesota and get it cracked and become an all-star, this and a third, I think Clay and, and Jalen could have as well. That's it. We can move on for it. But now they try to move him again. But I can't say now, that. I don't know why, G. I don't know how athletic Michael Jordan was, but Zach Levine got to be up there, G. Like, he He's can't so contest good. his pull-up. His first step is stupid. He got he can score from all three levels. He really competes. Like, I don't what's know. What's missing? Shit. Obviously signing the CAA with the media. Like, shit, that's what's missing? <laughs> like, shit. This guy to me. Like, <laughs> like that's what I'm asking. I'm like, man, you got to get you a new PR team. And he's playing it. on a bunch of badass teams, bro. Zach they Levine got three goes. And Bulls. Nick Vucevic is not an all star. He, he made it a couple times. I'm not disagreeing. No, 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 no. And I'm rocking with it, but come on, baby. Let's not do that. You yeah. know what I mean? And then, like, shit. And shout out to DeMar DeRozan because he's cold, but like, everybody can use a three point shooter, and DeMar don't do that. So it's like, you know what the matchup is going to be bad, and, and you miss out on Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball would have done so much for that team, and we forget that. And that's an understatement. So well, they had a bad. Really good. Uh, unbelievable. And uh, they, they had the city rocking, but it's just tough, man. So that's, that's, it's all good. In the NBA, the game can change in an instant. But no matter how the action unfolds, you know, DraftKings Sportsbook has your back. This week, new customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets just for betting 5 bucks on basketball. Win or lose, you get an instant dub. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code POINT for it. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on basketball. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code POINT for it. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 8778 hope or text hope 467369 In West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Please play responsibly. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, must be 21 or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. Point. Forward. We started this. We already started this conversation where we want to go. I think, Dre, you asked Jason a question before the camera started rolling. What did you say? No, it's going back a while now because when I when I first knew about your relationship, we know how good he is, and I, I check folks inner I check folks temperature by asking them one question. It just gives me a feel for who they are. So I asked him who was the best players in the league or the best player in the league, and the answer he gave me, my heart dropped. Who did he say, Dre? Right? <laughs> I can't remember. Who'd you say? It wasn't the right person. You didn't say Jason Tatum. I said Giannis at the time. Wait. Context is is important. This was right after they won championship. I got a lot of respect for guys that get to the top of the mountain, get over the mountain. And at that time, they had just 
and won the finals. He had a hell of a run. So when he asked me, I was like, you know, I said young. He's been hanging out with Michael Jordan a lot. You're so well versed in your answers. It's, it, I actually like it. It's beautiful. It makes jobs like the one I have currently. It makes my job really easy. So thank you. But then there's the other side that it irks me because sometimes I just want you to just go crazy on them and just let them know. I mean, yeah, I, when I step on the court, like it was, I don't step on the court like I'm the second best player. Like no, that never crosses my mind. Every time I step on the court, I know and feel like I'm the best player on the court. So I got a funny backstory for you. Um, when you graduate high school, 16, right? 2016. 2016. And so my uh, my god brother Lawrence Thomas the third. I think he's the third. Yeah, no, he's the second. He's Lawrence Thomas second. And he's um, grew up in Illinois. He went to school in uh, like Southern Indiana by Kentucky by Illinois. And he sent me this video of this high school kid. He was like, yo, this kid gonna be the best player in the NBA. And it's 2016. And so this is when we on our run. Yeah. We, we breaking MJ records, right? And he sends me this clip. I'm like, man, this goofy head little dude. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, man, y'all keep saying these kids are gonna be so good, but you can't say it yet. It's too early. But boy, was he right. It was you, which was cr crazy. Right. But you're St. Louis. I'm from Springfield. It's about an hour, 10 minutes apart. But he, he told me, it was that seven years ago. That was seven years ago. Seven years ago. That was back when you were, uh, what was that, going by Lil J, now you big dudes. Yeah. So what's the difference between when you're hooping in, you know, St. Louis, when you come in, you know, Lil J to now saying you got to take things in context and you're in a position of humbly speaking mm -hmm. where... I think the only real personality you show to yourself is calling yourself Big Deuce and, you know, the little inner confidence that you have. So can you break it down to two? Lil J is, uh, you know, that goes back to when I was growing up. Uh, my dad's name is Justin Tatum. So he, my dad's 6'6", and big guy, 240, got a bunch of tattoos, played in St. Louis University, played overseas. So... You know, St. Louis is small, so when I would walk next to him or walk behind him in the gym in the summertime, you know, that was Justin and that was Lil J. So Lil J was a kid that, you know, was clumsy, was skinny, always played two, three grades up, uh, was getting pushed around by the high school kids. Um, they always saw the potential and saw that, you know, he could be, you know, special one day. Uh, but he just had to grow up. Uh, and it's funny you mentioned that, like, I remember seeing you in the gym, because you had an AAU team, AI 90 Elite. Mm -hmm. And we used to play in Springfield sometimes, and I would see his team. I would see Dre walk in the gym, because one of my best friends, his name was Reggie. He, he was younger than me. He played on AI 90 Elite. So it's like, you know, I you remembering that, I remember seeing you. I remember seeing Sean Livingston mm -hmm. in Peoria, Illinois, True. in Sean the gym Livingston. sometimes. Uh, so that was legit looking up and like seeing guys like that and being like, man, like one day. And, you know, it's part of growing up, growing up, going through high school, um, you know, finding yourself, finding your way um, in this world, finding your space um, and getting comfortable in that. And, you know, having a son, you know, maturing, finding things that you like and just becoming more and more comfortable with who you are and what you do. We go through like throwbacks of back in the day and there's tons of footage of you kind of like manifesting in what you want to be when you're older. And I think uh, you said that we saw a video and we have a group chat together and I was like, <laughs> damn, you've been having your way for like the longest time, which makes you wonder, was there ever like a plan B mm. or was there, this was step one, two, three, four. It's funny you say that. Uh, growing up, I remember Kobe had a, he spoke at a camp one time and he asked the kids, like, what do they want to be when they grow up? And he asked the kids, like, what's your second option? And everybody kind of had a second option. And he all, he, he kind of looked at them funny and was like, man, I never had a plan B. Like, 
people always told me like disperse your eggs in different baskets. He was like, why would I not give all my time, energy and effort to the thing I'm trying to accomplish? And that just resonated so much. Like that was my favorite player. That's what I wanted to be like. So in my mind, it was never a plan B. Even to this day, people say like, what would you do? And it's like nothing. Like I was, was 50 cent, get rich or die trying. Like I was <laughs> going to get to the league or die trying. And I live by that. And I, I want to go back to what that feeling's like. You know, my son's 16 now. You know, he's playing on one of the top high school basketball teams in the country. And he's got a kid on his team that he's going pro. Like, I, I see it. His name's Trey Johnson. Mm. And, you know, God willing, you know, everything goes his course. His body stays intact. He's going to Texas. Oh, I know Trey. He was at my camp this yeah. summer. Yeah. I'm, watch crazy. I'm yeah, watching like this Trey. kid yeah. and I'm thinking, we don't even know how good he is because he plays like an NBA player. And sometimes NBA players, you can't see how good they really are until they play against NBA players. Yeah. He's just on a different pace. And he's so far ahead, you know, his throws him off sometimes. Or it's just weird stuff. But I'm saying, like, this kid's playing at a completely different level. But at the same time, I'm asking myself, can this kid enjoy his youth? Can he slow down in the process and not rush? I got to get to the league and just be a kid. And so I'm asking you going through that. And like you said, you either go to the NBA or there's nothing else. And you did that. How were you able to just let the process happen without trying to rush it? Because I feel like some kids are rushing it. They're taking on too many things from the outside and it detours their, it detours them from getting to the league, actually. You know, yeah. we got some young kids now with this NIL money. And it's, they're losing focus. They're still not working as hard. And then, you know, those are the ones that don't make it. But you were able to, you know, it seems like you made all the right decisions in terms of what you've done on the basketball court to reach your potential? I mean, I give a lot of credit to my mom. I mean, both my parents, like, I was raised right. And to their credit, they knew what I was trying to accomplish, but they were always just like, be a kid mm -hmm. first. Like, don't rush it. Like, cause you, my mom always told me, you're never gonna get this time back. Like, go to prom, go to homecoming, senior week, whatever it is. Uh, Cause even for me, like, I kind of rushed the process of college. Like when I left college, I was like, damn, I miss college. Cause the whole time I was at school, I was just thinking about June and getting drafted. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I left, I, I like, I love Duke, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't until I left, I was like, man, I wish I would have been a little more in the moment and like enjoyed the day to day. Cause you don't know how much different it's gonna be once you leave. Uh, so yeah, those things are important, but it's twofold because you don't want to get like complacent. Mm -hmm. We all know there's so many kids probably better than us in high school that thought they was going and thought they made it already and they stopped working. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would, and that's what any advice I would give to any kid that's trying to, you know, sit in our seat or get to the next level is like, be a kid, enjoy that time, but don't ever get complacent. There's too many stories about guys that could have been or should have been mm -hmm. that we just never know about. Mm -hmm. For sure. So I want to go back to, uh, you know, also the beginning, we say you were raised right. I think I saw an interview uh, where, you know, your dad kind of put so much pressure on you, kind of talked about, did he like me? And uh, I joke around and say like, yo, he low key is a modern day Jesus Shuttlesworth. Mm -hmm. You watch the TV and watch all that. His focus and his support behind him is kind of similar in that sense. From that tough love, what did you learn? And and you know, obviously, you had to be a little bit tougher because you grew up in you know, St. Louis. But how do you take that as a parent? And how is it different raising like a celebrity child, like your son, who, yeah. you know, has is growing up in University City as his own crib yeah. in Boston? Like, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, like you said. From like, my dad was a person that put the ball in my hand, right? Mm -hmm. He played overseas, he taught me the game, was my coach trainer till I got to about eighth grade. Um, and it, it was like a Jesus Shuttlesworth type of relationship. Like we've definitely gotten better and closer as I got older, but it did kind of put a strain on our relationship because, and like to his credit, his dad wasn't really in his life. So 
my parents was 19 when they had me. They was learning on the fly. And in his mind, he just was like, he didn't make it to the league, but he like, I'm, I played basketball at a high level. And if my son wants to get to the next level, all I know is push him as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he pushed the limits at times, but looking back on it, that is a big reason why I made it. Like in some ways, like in spite of what he thought, whether he meant it or didn't, you know, the things that he would say to try to push my buttons motivated me. Like I would wake up at 5.30 in the morning to prove to him that though I am going to be as good as I say I am. Like I am going to make it to that next level, even if you don't think I am. And it's not that he didn't, he just never, like, he never wanted me to get complacent. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that at a young age. Uh, and it's tough now, like, with being who I am and my son, I told a line, like, he, he plays basketball now. He's only five, be six next week. And I'm like, do I take that route? Yeah. First of all, I got to know if he love it. Yeah. Like, like, I'm not going to, he's already around it 24-7. If he just likes it, then I'ma just be the dad in the back, you know, good job, good game, let's go get some ice cream. But like, if he really loves it and like wants to, you know, try to pursue this, now it's, it's something I gotta think about. Cause it's like, that is, I don't want that for me and him, what I have with my dad, even though it worked, like I am who I am because in large part of why he pushed me so hard, but it had a strain on our relationship. Um, so that's like, that's a tough part about parenting. Like I'm certain, I couldn't imagine, like I feel like I had shoes to fill. My dad went to SLU. Like not if my dad played 16 years in the league, I couldn't imagine being a kid trying to navigate that. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. You know, I I waited until, you know, he proved to me that he loved hoop. Yeah. And it wasn't like he had to prove it, but I just had to see it. Yeah. And so I always got on him about like, yo, you got to work on your game. That was it. You work on your game. Did you go get shots today? But I would never go out there with him and just force it. Yeah. Just like when you call me, I'm waiting. And it's crazy now because he calling and I'm, it's almost close where I got to think about going out there with him. Yeah. Like, all right, I got to go out here and be ready. Today might be the day. Right. <laughs> like he getting good. Like he one leg windmill and, and it looked like oh, that. Wow. I was like, oh shit, yeah. And so I, it's making me nervous. But you know, to to like what you're saying, it's it's becoming more impressive though. I will say that more guys are coming into the league with that lineage yeah. of high profile yeah, parents in parents. the league. We're seeing that more than ever. You know, uh, you know, with the Grants, you know, Harvey's yeah, Grants. No, for, yeah, for sure, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Steph. His dad, they got two in the league. Seth, yeah. Seth, yeah. And then now you're looking at Jermaine O'Neal's son is uh, top ranked class 2025. You know, my son, you know, LeBron's kids, uh, obviously. Uh, Muhammad, what's Shorty's name? Uh, he's a big man from uh, Nazir Muhammad. His oh, son is oh, like oh, crazy, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, Bobby Simmons has a crazy, like, yeah. 10 year old, oh, like, for real. insane. Yeah. Insane. Uh, Dylan Harper. Yeah. Ron Harper's son is number oh, one, number oh, two. That's his son? Yeah. Be nice, be nice. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. and, and Ron Harper before the uh he had a micro fracture yeah, back then. Yeah. And so he really couldn't get back to himself. But he he should have been guarding Jordan on that Craig Elo shot. Yeah. Like Ron Harper was really like that. He won a dunk contest. Yeah. People forget about that. I remember that. He's averaging like 20 in Cleveland. I got a lot of respect for like kids like that. Like you grew up and everything was Life was good, yeah. right? Like a lot of people, a lot of guys in the league, like was working to get out of that situation yeah. that they grew up in. And so it's like, you know, I got a lot of respect for kids that still wanted to work at something, even though like you, you kind of got everything you yeah. need. I want you- I, Xavier Silas- That's a that story James, I want you to tell. Uh, James Silas, his dad played for the Spurs. And he's like, I know you grind ET. I know you say you came from here, this and a third, but he's like, bro, you gotta understand. I, I grew up in a mansion. I had a Lexus at 16. Like, you know how hard it is to work hard? Like, <laughs> imagine my struggle. Like, he's like, people don't understand my grind. And that's where I don't get respect. And I was like, damn, that is crazy. He's like, bro. I'll, There's some truth to that. Yeah, and he's yes. like, I'll go wake, wake up and go shoot a thousand shots. I had everything I wanted. Like, and it comes down to, like, back to the love of the game. Yeah. And we speak about the love of the game. You know, you have that tremendously. But uh, let's talk about a time where uh, you're able to go on ESPN details with one of your favorite players and mm. somebody who loves the game of basketball more than anybody. 
the legendary Kobe Bryant. What was that like meeting him? What was that like learning from him? And was there anything crazy that occurred besides him telling you to shoot the ball every time? <laughs> he did say that. Yeah. It's funny because he was right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And we're uh, pastors. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember it was uh, conference finals 2018. We was playing the Cavs. And I want to say it was after game one. We, we won game one on Mother's Day. Uh, we had practice the next day. Uh, back in the old facility in Waltham. Waltham, Come to my phone and I just got all these notifications. And uh, I remember I kind of like sat there in disbelief and I watched it. I sat in my chair for like an hour after practice. Um, and then I had a text message from an unknown number and it was him. He's like, yo, this is Kobe. Uh, you know, love your game, love what you're doing. You know, keep it up. This summer, I want to get together and work on some things. Just hit me. And at that time, I was 19. I just turned 20. I'm in the conference finals. And that moment was like, it was a full circle moment. Growing up in St. Louis, besides my mom and my dad, that was like my biggest inspiration. And it's it sounds cliche, but somebody, I think it's, it's crazy how somebody a thousand miles away doesn't didn't know me from a can of paint can inspire me to chase my dream the way that he did and to work out at five thirty in the morning mm -hmm. to watch all his highlights and and videos and even his post game interviews like I just everything about him I wanted to see and it's like this is like it was like yo this is what I worked for for this moment not to get drafted, but to be good enough where it's like, yo, you're the reason I work this hard. And so to get to know him and spend time with him is one of the, obviously even more so now, one of the most memorable experiences that I've had. And, and that takes me to this thought, and we had this conversation with Steph, and I don't even, I don't know the right time of, you know, this podcast when I ask this, so, but it's on my mind. And so, Evan, I want you to tell him um, the speech that uh, Drazen Petrovic's mother gave during his funeral. Oh, uh, yeah. And we spoke to Steph about this, and just tell the story not. When uh, you saw the Once Brothers, but when Drazen's mom was upset that he passed, she was like, we know you're upset, but we're equally as hurt because Drazen didn't just belong to you, he belonged to all of us. Like, he inspired all of us, he made us believe. And, like, I guess that's correlation of, you know, Kobe. Even when you think about the Kobe situation and stuff, it, he almost, I mean, people still aren't over it. You know? Yeah, and, and that, but I think this is what we spoke about with Steph. His mother said, you know, we didn't get to spend as much time as we would have liked to with him. But if you think about it, he was put on earth for you all to enjoy him yeah. and fruits of his labor. But that it's like pros and cons, like it's gifts and curses to it like MJ may not have been able to do as much as he would have liked to with his family members or do some of the things he would have liked to have done just because of the superstar and you're the most you have the most um endorsements in the NBA out of all the players you know I had a conversation with one of your representatives and you're the most sponsored player in the NBA the most endorsements like that says a lot about you mm -hmm. the new face of the league and so how do you think about the responsibility that comes with it and that part of like you're here for us as much as you're here for yourself. No, and it, it sounds it sounds <laughs> crazy. Yeah. And so have you ever thought about that and then how do you process it day by day? It's crazy. I saw, I forgot exactly who it was, but it was a guy on one of these talk shows and he was talking about uh he was talking about Tom Brady and how possibly when he decided to retire and come back, how it might have had a strain on his relationship with his wife and his family. Awesome. And the and the guy was talking basically like, yo, there are some people on this earth that are so talented and gifted that as crazy as it sounds, you have their responsibility to your family, but you have like a responsibility to society of how special God made you to, for the world to like enjoy and be able to see and appreciate that. And when he said that, it was like, mm, there's some truth to that. As, as crazy as that might be to grasp or to understand for the, you know, a regular, not a regular, but a normal person, but, mm -hmm. you know, guys in that position, I think they understand like, yo, I have a 
larger responsibility to society of the God-given ability that I have. I always told you what like made me like super shocked is like he might come in drop sixty and he's right back to his normal routine and I was like, bro, you said thirty, forty, thirty, like take a break, but like it really shows how locked in he is because he's really bought it every single day. And thirty, thirty does the same thing. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's, it's like yeah. whoa, like he he has the understanding, and so you know from me to you, like that's that's just a special thing to have, and you know. Here's here's what I want to give you, just knowing how valuable you are. Because I feel like the what came to mind was Mother Teresa, right? And this will go viral, like the flat earth thing theory or whatever. Like they'll try to turn it the wrong way. And your teammate, Jalen Brown, speaks to this, how they just try to dumb us down as athletes. Yeah. But they're aware of the impact we have to society. Like you heard someone say it. And they'll say it about Tom Brady, but it may not translate the same way to one of us. Yeah. And I'm not trying to make it racial, but there are undertones to that. And so my voice to you, or my message to you is understand when you walk in rooms, there's yeah. a certain level of respect. Like E.T. always telling me, like, Dre, when you around me, you Dre. Like, you the boss. Like, we open the doors for you. And I'm saying the same thing to you. Right. When you come in the room, hey, when we walking around with you at the Ohio State game, my eyes are like this. I'm making sure yeah. <laughs> the surroundings are cool. Anybody walk up, hey, be careful now. Like, I ain't Andre Iguodala. I'm with Jason Tatum, and I got to make sure he's good. Right. And so just making sure, like, no matter who you're talking to, they owe you that respect. Like, you are one of the most valuable human beings on earth. That's a powerful statement, and they don't want us to know that. And it's not to scare you, but right. it's just to let you know, like, the, the, the respect that you deserve wherever you go. Right. And uh, you brought up Jalen, and you guys have two different – Playing styles, two different energies, two different, you know, type of personalities. I think one thing that we, you know, we love so much about Jalen is, uh, you know, not only does he use his platform, you know, to show how talented he is, but he uses his platform for, you know, to be in a community in a sense. I think there's two different type of ways you deliver things. And Jalen's going to be on this platform and you're kind of, you know, the face of the league, the quote unquote MJ, Kobe type platform. Where do you want like your message or how do you want your message to be delivered and things bigger than just basketball? Because you know, you comprehend how important you are and, and, and sometimes with our culture, our youth, when it's something like big coming out, we need pause, we need right, right. you to speak. Like, are, are you comfortable enough and when you're getting off, like starting to comprehend and that's a big, big part that comes to territory? No, absolutely. And for me, I think uh, what I've learned is getting more comfortable in that spotlight and learning how to uh, use your platform to speak on what is important to you. Mm -hmm. And and that could be different from guy to guy. While there are things that need to be equally important to all of us, there are you know, special or different things that are important to us as individuals. And you guys have came to my charity golf event. St. Louis is extremely, extremely important to me. Changing where I came from, uh, using my platform, my uh, voice, uh, my charity to change the narrative, right? And not so much just give back, it's more like, I love going back and, mm -hmm. and and letting the kids see me. And that's like, it sounds crazy for me to say that, but I've realized how important it is for like them to see me, them to be able to touch me and talk to me and be like, yo, he used to walk up this street. He was at this corner store. He was at this rec center. He was an alley boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was an alley boy. And I tell kids all the time, like, yo, I know St. Louis is not the prettiest place or the most positive, well-talked-about place, but there's a lot of positive that can come out of here. And you don't have to be the NBA player. We all not blessed to be 6'9 or whatever. But just because we came from St. Louis, don't ever let anybody tell you what you can or can't do. Whatever your dream is, whatever your goal is, I want to stress that you can chase that. And that, that is something that, like, the youth, kids, kids from back home, like, that is... That is so important to me because I know, like, I was that kid from St. Louis and felt like, man, everybody overlooks us. Every Nobody talks about, they talk about Nelly and, like, that's it. 
The arch and the, the arch. arc, whatever y'all call it. Yeah, do it, yeah. What was, what was your favorite Nelly joint? I mean, everybody liked Dilemma and Yeah. Yeah, I was crazy. Yeah, I was one of the best songs ever. St. Louis. St. Louis, your favorite joint? That's my favorite song. Number one was crazy. Number one was crazy too. I, I Heart mean, of the Champion was crazy. St. Louis, I mean, Nelly definitely put us on. Like we didn't, we ain't had nobody before that. So then, I mean, now you go, you didn't have anybody before that, but since then, you think about the high school you went to. It consists of your former teammate David, David Lee, Lee mm -hmm. NBA champion, your big brother Brad Bill, and then now you. So uh, when you talk about moving up from just being St. Louis, now you're on a global term. Just even regards to the big deal you have with 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 Jordan. I remember being in Paris and seeing your picture all over the place. What What's that like? How do you like, uh, you know, being part of that deal and now being a, the head face of Jordan? Because I always tease you, my favorite hooper is uh, Luka Doncic. And I ain't know <laughs> if you could take over that spot. But now he's at that level. And we talk about you taking over the face of the game and having great battles with some of the older guys. But what are you foreseeing coming up with some of the battles with guys your age? Not just being joking, but with Lucas, with the Trays, with the Anthony Edwards. You know the the people you're gonna get old with. Yeah, I think that's the that's the cool thing about the NBA. Like, so many guys that I looked up to. You when you first come into the league, there's a there's a sense of like being starstruck. Yeah. Like, I can I remember my first game in the league was Kyrie's first game back in Cleveland, and we played LeBron, and we had a back to back, and we played Giannis at home. And then 12 games later, we played in OKC and I was at the free throw line with Melo and Paul George. And I was just like, I was like, oh my God. And then a few years go by and now that's your matchup and you playing against these guys in the playoffs. I didn't, you know, played against KD twice in the playoffs and I got pictures of being at his camp. Mm -hmm. Like I was at his elite camp competing against him, talking to him and now, that's my matchup in in the playoffs. And now he's saying like he's making memorable playoff memories, or he's saying he's going home telling his friends about the you know the Tatum matchup. When you talk about some of those memorable matchups, uh, who's some people that you kind of remember like damn like once you get back to the locker room like bro I just went crazy like versus one of my favorite favorites was it the forty six with the Milwaukee Bucks versus the self proclaimed number one player in the world. <laughs> That was wild. <laughs> uh, the KD, the KD matchup for sure. Um, Cause they yeah, beat you us. got a little you 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 got a little umph in it when you play against KD. I, just, I, was I trying, like it, yeah, I and trying, you always remind me. And now I, I watch. I'm like, oh him, like, shit, bro, buddy, like, been winning for a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like, bro, you been winning for a minute. I seen it, but I Oof. no, I, I they was quadruple teaming him though. All right, I can give you that, but I'm saying no, like no, head to head, no, head to no. head, bro. Like Quad head to head, team, man. head to head was kind of wild. No, Showing no. Showing bodies for sure. You have to. <laughs> but like. My, cause I saw, I saw Scotty Barnes who's up and coming. He had a clip on uh, his stories today and, you know, showed him guarding KD. And he's in KD like he stopped him, but KD was clearly gonna go by him. But they had somebody at the elbow sitting in his lap, no, for and sure. it's like, you "Gotta show body." <laughs> you heard what KD said. KD don't get mad when he's not having great games, but KD was saying like, "Come on, man! Like y'all sending four dudes at me, man! Come on, man! What y'all want me to do?" <laughs> like it's getting ridiculous. <laughs> well, I will, let's talk. But yeah. the way he was playing, that's when I looked at him totally different. I'm like. Oh, he's scary good. And he took a step up because to me that was that was the first time in my career where I felt like because the year before they beat us, we wasn't that good, and they some they, they had Kyrie James and yeah, KD. Twenty twenty one, right? Five yeah, games. and that, we we went we lost four one. Yeah, uh, but the next year they was a seven seed, but they wasn't your traditional seven mm -hmm. seed. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, that was the time where it was like. Y'all are welcoming them. Y'all were like, if we get them, let's get them. Yeah. Y'all didn't even care. Y'all yeah. really was just was, like, all right, let, let them see it. It was the last the yeah. last day of the season, and it was certain teams that was, like, not trying to be the two seed because they didn't want to play against Brooklyn. And, you know, we was like, regardless, you're going to have to play somebody to get to what you want to get to. Yeah. So that was kind of the first time I was like, 
match like we we in a playoff series, and can you match up against the other team's best player and try to outplay them to help your team win a series? Like that was the first time I felt like, all right, like I gotta be, I gotta play to the level of KD. Did to you, get us past this. Do you give your former coach, Ime Udoka, any credit for that mentality? Because I remember talking to you before, and it was like, he's telling like, yo, off rip, Ime is like, yo, these ain't your friends. Kill that <laughs> motherfucker. And like, I kind of realized when you were taking leaps and bounds, or I'm even just reading snips, they're like, yo, we not ducking nothing, bring the nets. I'm like, bring the nets, you know what happened? <laughs> like, like, just drug y'all out the, <laughs> just drug y'all out the gym. So like, what was it like prior to, obviously, we understand scan or whatever went on, but talk about what it was like that season and playing for Ime and the mindset that he helped you take as a leap as a man, because it's definitely a difference. No, for sure. I got so much love and respect for Ime. Uh, you know, coming into that season, people forget we was 23 and 24. Like, we was 11th seed at one point of the season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we finished the season like 26 and 3. Like, we went on a crazy run. But... I think his approach to the game, to us, that mentality of like, like we would watch film and he would pause it. And like, it would it'd be a time I was guarding Brian and I let him get past me. He would pause it and he would be like, yo, like, y'all not friends, y'all not homies. Like, you trying to get to where he at. Like, why would you? So like that mentality every day of like, mm -hmm. He like, yo, he said, we not no track team. We not running from nobody. If we got to play the Nets, we got to play them. And like for that message to come from the top, from the coach, I think it just ran through everybody. And like, we was on that. Like, we we was like, we got, we not running from nobody, whatever it takes, whatever, whoever we got to play, that's what it's going to be. Now let's talk about your... Well, that, I'm saying that was the same season you guys ended. We went to the NBA finals and I felt like, I want to ask a question about probably your toughest matchup, which is a, a hell of a matchup. It's going up against the Golden Child number 30. What did you learn from that? Mm. You guys were up 2-1. Mm. It's still one of the most impressive runs ever. Versus Marcus Smart, he went 90-50-40. And I remember after game three, I'm three? looking at Dre, and like, I'm like, bro, if you say y'all going to win, go ahead. <laughs> but I've never, ever seen... Nobody do y'all like that. And I'm like, these young boys are dangerous. And what I say? You said a lot. You was the truth. I'm like, I don't know. Like, but what was that like? And what did you learn from that? And when it's coming down to being the king of like the mountain, where do you think you need to elevate from when you get that next, that next shot at the title? Uh, after that, I already had a lot of respect for the Warriors, their tradition, everybody on that team, Steph and everybody. It just went so much higher after we played y'all in the finals because that was my first time getting past the conference finals, first time going to the finals. And we beat the Nets, we sweep them in four, but every game was less than eight points. We go toe to toe with Giannis, we win in seven, we beat the Heat in seven. Like we had a hard road to get to the finals. So after like they beat us, they were the better team. We didn't play well enough to win, but it made me realize like, how hard you have to work to get there mm -hmm. and how much harder and tougher mm -hmm. and more together and smarter you have to be to win. Like, I didn't realize, like, obviously you can say like, yo, it's hard to win a championship. But a lot of people don't know. Right. Like only so many people have won. Only so many people have gotten to the championship. Like you realize like, oh, what they have been able to do is, is special. And like, you just gotta tip your hat. Like they they beat us, and for them to do that four times is like no. There's a re. It's not luck. It's a reason why. And you know it it makes you go back to the drawing board. Like yo, I'm not I'm not doing enough. Like I did enough to get there, but it's clearly some more you gotta do to get over that hump. And you know, considering you always see that viral clip with Dre and you know Wiggins, and Wiggins was your. I'm just saying, yeah, Wiggins was your main defender. Mm -hmm. And I know one thing that Dre always talked about that was like he brought up with Kobe in certain moments. He's like, yo, I want Jason to start attacking closer to the rim, right? Yes. And yes. I'm not going to tell you how to hoop. Yes. I know for sure when yes. it came down to it. I, yes. 
I would love to hear some of that yes. defensive scheme in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Now that Dre's yeah. done, but like yeah. he yeah, always yeah. harps. I'm like, bro, he ain't gonna get in the gym with me, but he might, yeah. so, <laughs> he might listen to you. And I know you've been working with Paul Pierce, right? And we'll get into that. I love Paul Pierce. Sam Paul. Cassell, that's the secret weapon. So, Sam, Sam Cassell was Sam Cassell was like one he's like the Drew Holiday. He was like a Drew Holiday. Sam Cassell was so good. Oh my God, he was a problem. But I learned this in Miami. They're so good at finding your weakness, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was gonna bring this up and it's flowing perfectly in terms of like they being your Detroit Pistons, the Miami he have. And they, it's like the, the Jordan rules, it's the Tatum rules. And I've seen it put together. And they will figure out what your weakness is. I mean, they'll say after you take three dribbles, right. we doing this. It's like that detail. Not like going left, not going right, but like after three dribbles we're doing this. When it's this much time on a shot clock, this triggers. At the 15, this is the trigger. At seven seconds, this is the trigger. I'm like, yo, this is it. I learned so much in the organization. But what I learned is when you get to the finals, the amount of threes you take isn't that important anymore. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, through the first three quarters, yeah, you're going to get your three points. Like, you're getting a higher volume. But when it gets to that fourth quarter, you need a basket. Yeah. And I saw Devin Booker get double teamed by the Knicks a couple weeks ago, right? And they doubled him high with his dribble, and he passed it and got a dribble hand back, and then he still got his three off. But if you go back to, like, the greats, MJ, Kobe, they get to their spots, right? and they catch it, like, on the wing. You need a bucket. You don't need a three. And when you got your live dribble, it's a harder move to make. Now, one-on-one, you got your – you got the, you got this – Tween cross, like you and Paul George have like one of the best like tween crosses or like the, the cadence of it. It's like, yeah, I would just leave dudes out the screen. It's pretty incredible. But it's easy to send double teams yeah. at you when you so far from the basket with a live dribble. Now, when you catch it and you can triple threat and you can either get to the elbow or you can get to the baseline, you can get your shot off regardless. Look at KD. When KD got his dribble <laughs> out on the perimeter, what PJ Tucker do to him? Just foul the crap out of yeah. him, try to push him out of because. But when KD catches it on his spot, everybody know, damn, I'm dead. Yeah, live dribble for sure. But that live dribble kills you because I can send a double team at you, and it's hard to get it back. But like you saw MJ, he would catch it on the wing, win the dribble, and then he once he took his dribble and he double teamed him, it's easy to find an open man when you when you're attacking at the elbow or you're on the wing position, and that's why he kept finding Steve Kerr. And you got your two bigs low, like that five out. It's hard, it's easy to guard that. But when you got a, so like a real live person at the basket, the closer you catch to the basket, you gonna get any shot you want. Or if they double or triple team you, swing swing, you gonna get a wide open look. But it's hard to get a wide open look with a live dribble so far from the basket. The defense can rotate easier when the ball's so far out. But when it's in attack mode at those elbows, those trigger points, like Phil Jackson put that bull at a certain spot on their home court for a reason. Mm -hmm. This is where you should be at the triangle. He put, he did it on purpose. When you go back and look at the bulls, those bulls horns, that logo is on certain spots on the floor on purpose. It triggers shit for their offense. And that's how MJ was attacking in certain areas. And that's how he knew how to, he gonna find somebody. He's like, I'm gonna get a look or I'm gonna get somebody a wide open look so I can trust moving the ball out of there. Right. And y'all got killers. Everybody on your team down. Y'all got five guys who can make a three in a corner. Yeah. So when you attack from those elbow positions, it's normally going to be a wide open corner three, or you can get a wing three, or somebody in dunker spot for a dunk. And you got Drew, you got Porzingis, you got Jalen, and you got Hofer, and you got Derek White, D. White, and you got uh, oh, like, the White dude. And you got Pritchard. That Pritchard, he can hoop. Yeah. You got Robert. options. <laughs> and you seven seven feet tall, you can offensive rebound. Right. But when you dribbling out there, you getting your shit off so far. It's easy to box you out out there. You can't get yourself in the position. But, like, just think about that. But, like, yeah, Steph and them, like, you got anomalies. And yeah. then it, it overtrends the game. Yeah. But in the fourth quarter, you need a bucket. And can't nobody guard you. You Let know you that. Do. No, that's my question. How good do you think you are? Humbly speaking, I actually want to know. <laughs> Cause like MJ knew, like man, y'all can't mess with me. But he was humble in his interviews. But MJ was. Can I, can I say we can cut it? But I, he, we spoke one time. So if I win this 
am I up there with am I am I ahead of Scotty Pippen? <laughs> so like so like so to And Scotty was one of the best players. Scotty's better than people think. No, I'm not knocking it. But I, it's a difference between you and Scotty. No, but I'm just glad that he he literally said that in a sense of being like, no, like he'll chill and say this, but no, but he's well, he's 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 a much better player than Scotty. But that's just speaking to how good he is. Yeah. It's not a knock on Scotty. Scotty better than most dudes in the league today. Of course. Yeah. Scotty be a top five player in the league today. But that's how good I'm saying he is. And I want to know how good does he think he is. Like all time. Richard Jefferson just said it. Richard Jefferson just said it. Did you see it? What did he say? I see that. He said he's gonna be top ten, top fifteen, top ten player. Oh, Didn't he say that? Uh, RJ just said he this. said he said something like what, like some like what would a championship do or like if I was to win like lead a team to a championship would that put me in that all time great fifteen twenty range? Yes. It 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 changed when uh, and I know like I didn't play great in the finals, but it was all it was almost like a like yeah we lost uh, they got one on me. But it was like, yo, they fucked up. Like they, I figured out how to get there. And I was 23, 24 at the time. Like I had just turned 24 and not making an excuse for like, I didn't play well enough. Like that's fine. But I remember like after being upset that we lost and letting time sink in, I was like, I was like, oh, this, like I, I didn't kind of, I didn't figure some shit out. Like I'm not trying to be, one of the best players, like, oh no, I, I'm, like, I know I can average thirty. I got first team All NBA a couple years in a row. Like, I know how to do that. Not that it's easy, but it's like I know how to do that. Now it's just, I just got to win one, and you know, it's always like that. Don't define who you are, but it's like we all like you want to win. And you comprehend your moment in time, especially in the sense of. Uh... The great Boston tradition. So you look, you've been hanging out with Paul Pierce, you look at KG, even you mentioned Tom Brady, or even think of David Ortiz. You have an opportunity to really be remembered in the height. So during mm. your era, which is your time and the Boston time, where do you want to take it? Like what type of run do you want to go on? What how do you want to be remembered in that sense as a player? Honestly, like I didn't understand how special of a place Boston was that I got here. I didn't like Boston. Like, I felt like them beating the Rams was the reason the Rams <laughs> ended up leaving. I ain't got a football team. <laughs> That's funny. Like, we was never good after that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they beat Kobe in 08, so I was sick about that. Uh, but this is a special place. Like, you know, being here, like, they love their sports teams. They love their guys. Like, and I, I feel like I'm, I feel like they, I've been embraced. Like, I'm one of... Like, I feel like they accepted me as one of their guys. And there's a sense of pride, there's an edge that you have to have to, to play here. But I can only imagine the love. Like, I know how much love I get now. Yeah. I can only imagine the love, the reception, if you hung one of those banners up. Like, I, 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 it, it would be incredible. I, it's going to be incredible. I know it is. What, what do you think about the pressure that comes with being so good, where it's just always a microscope? It's tough. Not even going to sugarcoat it, because there's nothing to prepare you for. Because mm -hmm. like, there's only so many guys that have been in that situation that you are in or trying to be in. Uh, and everybody got to deal with it in their own way. And mentally, it, like, it can be a lot. Like, just the idea of, like, being being young and, like, every single night is 20,000. When you walk out on the court, it's 20,000 people that came to see you be Superman, mm -hmm. right? They don't know what you're dealing with at home, family problems, you arguing with somebody back in St. Louis or, something wrong with Deuce or whatever. It's like, no, I, I've i seen you do this before. I want to come see you do this tonight. And, like, I, I don't care what else you got going on. Like, be that person that we want to see. Mm -hmm. And 
it's like you got to learn to navigate that. And it's tough. Like, I remember going through that playoff series, I was mentally drained after each series. Because I thought, I was like, if I outplay KD and we beat the Nets, I'll be fulfilled. Like, I did something. And it's like, we did that. And they was like, ah, they was banged up. Can you go be Giannis? Ah, Chris Middleton wasn't there. Can you go on the road? Can you beat Jimmy Butler? And I you know, I did all those things. And after each time, I was like, I'm supposed to feel something. Right. I, it don't mean nothing in Boston if you can't win the championship. And we lose to y'all, and I didn't play well enough. And it's like, see, that's who. And it's like, as much as you can say, I don't pay attention to that stuff, it's like, you just you hear it. It's there. It's accessible. And even the toughest-minded person, like, subconsciously, that is in your mind. And the only way to figure it out is to go through it. Like, yep. you just got to learn from it. Yep. Do you ever look around? Because you said being so good. You're 25 years old. <laughs> you look at other dudes. It's crazy. You look at other kids that age and... We're watching them do TikTok dances, <laughs> seeing how fly they are and all that goofy stuff. And like, I think one thing I love about your brand is so rare is you really keep it about hoop. Like, mm -hmm. even when you talk about leading a league in minutes mm -hmm. or you're about to go, if you do play the Olympics, you're about to, and play in the finals, you're about to go on a whole nother 12 month run where you're basically hooping every single day or 340 days out of 360 days. And it's like, do you ever look back and like, damn, well, he's able to get away with this or like he's able to get away with that, but we're the same age or like they haven't done anything yet. How are we still in yeah. the same air, same breath, getting paid the same dollars and like everything is on my back? You, you, you ever think about that? Because it's legit different. Not not from a standpoint of like it's not fair. Yeah. It's just like they don't understand. Like it's crazy you could – like you could go to work with people, like you could play on the same team with certain guys and like, like me and Peyton, me and Peyton the same age. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, that and is. I've known Peyton since we was that is in crazy. high school. <laughs> and it's like, it's no knock to pee. Like I love his game, but right. like we, we live yeah, two, two different, different lives. lives. Yeah. And it's like, but we still on the same team. And like, not like I don't look at it like, man, when we lose, they're not talking about him. I don't look at it like yeah, that. Yeah. And because it's just like sometimes people think the best players don't have any worries. Like, yo, you get all the money, you all the fame. It's like, no, we just got different problems. Like, mm -hmm. you might worry about playing time or whatever. And it's like, yo, I'm trying to figure out how to be the best player on the best team and win because that's all that they grade me on now. Yeah, because you look at the paper after the game, you're like, your yo 30 would have helped tonight. Like, like, <laughs> like, if you don't play, like, if you, it would have helped. Like, they said you was good. But it's like, when it go to the brand, it's, for me, and y'all know, y'all played in the league, like, I didn't grow up wanting to play in the league so I could have money and be famous. Right. And all the people know me and drive nice cars. Like, I mean, y'all know I like nice things and nice watches. But like, I love basketball. I I hate, like I fight with Brad all the time when they try to be like, yo, you need to take a game off this month. I'm like, no, like, yeah, that team might not be good, but somebody got tickets for Christmas to come watch me play. Like, like no, I'm going to play. Like, I, 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 I hate coming out the game. Like, I love basketball. I dreamed of this like every day when I was a kid. And so, yeah, it's tough sometimes getting out the bed, played 38 minutes last night and it's 22 degrees outside. Like, yeah, it's not easy, but it's like, man, this is what I dreamed about. I love playing basketball. Like everybody don't love playing basketball. And I didn't, I, I thought they did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that time I got to the league, like, oh, everybody don't love basketball. And it's like sad. Cause it's like, yo, how do you not love this game as much as I do? Well, what I've been able to learn, and it's two things, you know, um, let me get to your point first, because I, I have a request from you as executive director. But the first one is I've <laughs> learned like that mental health thing is real. A thousand percent. So you're, you need an outlet. Like, 
you know, I think I think you grasp this, so I can tell you this. You know, you understand how blessed you are and the parents that you've had to you're able to take everything that comes your way, move it to the side, perform at a high level. And I used to think the same thing. Like, yeah, I don't love playing basketball. Like, this is fun. But then I was able to see the things that come with it. And if you aren't equipped with the certain capacities, you know, mentally, uh, you know, physiologically, you know, sociologically, all those things, uh, psychologically, all the collages, whatever. If you aren't equipped with those things, then, you know, first thing that's going to take a hit is your performance or not even your performance, just the way you perceive the world. And so instead of you going someplace as an outlet, you look at that place as the reason why you have all your problems. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about it like that. Like some guys would be like, if I wasn't an NBA, they wouldn't be bothering me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a real thing. <laughs> Which is crazy. But at the same time, this is why you are who you are, because you are able to overcome those things. Yeah. And so I guess that is part of my question too, you know, with your brand, with how you sell your shoes, you know, the process of making shoes. Like we're, we're sneaker heads. And I've seen all the shoes that you're wearing. You're wearing a different color every game. Like, it's beautiful to see. You know, you got the Carolina has a version. Sorry, or, uh, or whatever right, like. right, right, right. Whatever you like. You know, like, that's a shoe my son wears. Like, yeah. only Jason Tatum's. And I, I can't believe I'm buying sneakers just <laughs> every week. But I don't mind because it's you. Yeah. You know, like, you have that effect, you know. And it's your first shoe, too. Um, talk to us about that process and what you like about it and what you see with, you know, uh, future iterations of, of of the Jason Tatum Jordan shoe? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it, it's been a long time coming. It's really, uh, people don't know it's the 18-month process from, like, first talk about the shoe until it comes out to retail. I mean, you know, this is, Tatum 2 is already done. I wear it soon. The Tatum 3 is done. Oh, damn. damn. So that's what I'm saying, like, you, I could be wearing one, the second one is finished, and we finish in the third one, and we just started working on the fourth one. So like, you know, that, it, it's crazy, cause it's like, it's hard to, cause you still wanna enjoy what you have now. Uh, and for me, man, like, I still get excited about like, seeing kids wear my jersey. Mm -hmm. Like when we on the bus, and we drive into the game, and you see the fans waiting outside to get in early, and like, just all these Tatum Zero jerseys, like, I still get excited about that. I'm like, man, that's all the all the players in the league, and you went to go get my jersey. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't get used to that. So now when I have my own shoe, and I see people posting it online, certain guys in the league or colleges or little kids, it's like, I just I, I'm I'm grateful. I'm I'm thankful. I just like I get excited. It's like. I don't ever want to get used to this or feel right. like, man, I'm above this. Like, no, like, because I know as a kid, when you buy your favorite player's shoes, it's just like the bridge between y'all. Like, yep. yeah. in a way, yeah. I, you feel connected. So I understand the impact that it can have. How'd you feel? Were you nervous when they first had the leak and they didn't leak? Remember, we talked, you're mm. like, man, that's not the shoe. That's not the shoe. <laughs> that's not the shoe. And you see now, like, your shoes are everywhere so much that it's at UNC. UNC has it's the, top shoe. It's, it's the top, top shoe. it's the top shoe. And, and even passing them, I told you, we were going back and forth. I'm like, you, you going to pass Luca's shit? But like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, it's the best shoe. Yeah. The best shoe out. So much that Anthony Edwards didn't even pull your shoe out the bat. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it, yeah. That was my next question. And, and then I wanted, when we talk about future battles, so let, don't, don't PC me. I want... What can we expect moving <laughs> the next 15 years on like so what's me, gonna come about Luca and what's gonna come about from Anthony Edwards and the Jason Tatum saga? Cause everybody needs a dance partner. And let me paint this picture. Let me paint this. Talk to him, Dre, because I wanna know. All-star game. It was 1998. MJ is in the locker room pacing around. That Laker boy. That Laker boy gonna be shooting all the shots tonight. That Laker boy. MJ never really showed too much love to a competitor, but he did because it was in a different form. Yeah. And it was that Laker boy. And one of my favorite games this year was Boston and Minnesota. And young fella went crazy on both ends. Mm -hmm. 
You tweeted what he just did. Oh my god! I was like, damn, get off like that. No, but <laughs> no, no, I didn't. because of who he's doing it against. It was crazy. He had a good game on both ends of the floor, and they sent doubles at him. You and, for and, he, and, and he, I don't think he was guarding him per se. They were sending no, doubles at him, but but he was getting to his spots. <laughs> And then he hit McDaniels in the three. Like, I'm going to be talking about getting to our spots again. And so when you look at certain matchups like that, um, like E.T.'s question, like the next 15 years, like who are you excited to battle against? Yeah, considering you're so stoic, nothing ever really gets you. Yeah. I mean, no, nah, I that was that was a good game. Uh, and he played his ass off. Like, he made plays on both ends. I was pissed because it's two teams – and I know it might end one day, but I up until that point, I never lost to Minnesota. Oh. I had my first 50-point game against them. Like, I had never lost to Minnesota. And I've never lost to Memphis. So playing against the Grizzlies all this time. And I still, we just beat them. So hopefully that streak continued for a long time. But uh, Anthony Edwards is up there. Um, Luca. Um, uh, D-Buck? Yeah, but I would say, like, I was I was going more so, it's tough because, I, yeah, I guess book. But I would say, like, I don't really, like, I, now that they on the Suns, I would guard KD. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, but Luka, Anthony Edwards, um, Ja, when he comes back. Uh, I like, and the guys in my class, um, Donovan Mitchell, just some guys I've known for a long time. Bam, we play, I feel like we play the Heat all the time. So those, like, even though he's, you know, more of a big man, um, Fox, like me and Fox, the same class. Mm. Um, and especially now Sacramento rolling, like they got it figured out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I look forward to those. Is there anybody when you say the chip, is there is there anything you envision like when you want to win a chip? Like, is there a team you want to win it versus, or you just want? To win? <laughs> uh, I mean, I just want to win. I mean, there is a part of me that like, like I would love it, like if I got to play the Warriors. You know what I'm saying? The the, the guy that beat you up. It's like, yeah, right, I like that. I like that. You might have got me today, but you're gonna have to whoop my ass every day till I get mm -hmm. mine's back. And that's a, like, like yeah, the Warriors. Y'all got me. Like in a perfect world, I would love to play against them. Uh, but, you know, it right. don't matter. Well, before we leave out, let's do some rapid fire. So, like, who's your current top five right now? And then give us a top ten all time. I was at your golf foundation, and I damn near got this on because I was arguing Tim Duncan top five the whole time. So, I want to know. Top five all time? Top five. Uh, we'll do top six all time and top five current players right now. Mike. Bron, Kobe, Mike, Bron, Kobe. It's tough. I, I want to say Kareem. I never like. I didn't see Kareem play, but I respect what he did. So, Mike, Bron, Kobe, Kareem. Magic and stuff. Okay. Okay. And then how many rings do you think you need to enter that debate? In the top six? Top six, yeah. The Rushmore. You got to at least get three. I say four, but I say okay. three. Three. But it depends. Like, it depends how that three come about. You do three with th three different teams and you get finals MVP with all of them. You went three in a row, which ain't been done in a long time. You know, that's a that would that's different. If you pick a guy, pick a player in the NBA that can get three in a row, that's crazy. Yeah. I, I'm saying, like, think about it. I, I can. It's so much harder. Only to think win of now. one. Yeah. I can only think of one guy that can get three in a row, like starting today. Oh, him. Oh, okay. If I say right there, who? <laughs> yeah. Who? All right, yeah. No, well, if you if you really think about it, anybody else in the league you think could get three in a row? For sure. I mean, he should have been had one. I thought he should have been had one. But, you know, but we still talking, he's only 25. I keep forgetting that. Yeah. It almost works against him. Because I'm like, here, we get one. I'm like, damn. MJ didn't even sniff 
The, he didn't even get in the playoffs at 25, I don't think. At 28. Damn, that is crazy. <laughs> Kobe won his first ring at 21, though. Stop playing with Diesel, because Tony Parker won finals MVP at like 20, but Timmy was there. You absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't say Shaq. Shaq like seven. Yeah. Shaq could be all right. <laughs> seven is a good place for Shaq. Okay, and then what about uh what is it, your current top five players in the league? It's a hard question though. It is. Yeah, it's hard. Cause if you can go like today, this season, who's playing like well? Like today. Like Fox is going. I didn't know Fox's numbers were like they what they are. Shit, I ain't know Tyrese Halliburton numbers. Were. Tyrese Halliburton is going crazy. He going dumb. So let's just who you think will win an in season MVP then? And we going crazy, crazy. So is that like what you do in every in season game, or is it just like when you get to Vegas? Thank you very much. I I'm not a fan of the in season MVP, and you playing all these games. But only the games on Tuesdays and Fridays count for MVP. So it's the MVP of Tuesdays and Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad you said that out loud. I was like, what? Maybe you should do something about it. You know, just talk about but it. No, it, but you have to have. But the is it every game or just the games in Vegas? No, it's every game a part of the in season tournament. Oh. So Tuesdays and Fridays and then the tournament. Oh, I but have no idea. No. What the in season tournament has done for November of the NBA. It was an amazing idea. So, except for this past Friday, or this past oh, Tuesday, it, it, there are there are. I wasn't a fan of this past Tuesday. Yes, I wasn't a fan of fouling Drummond. It was a bad look, and so we'll fix that collectively. And it wasn't like it wasn't Joe's fault or our fault. Right, you have like, to do it. Yeah. And like we was in the game, I was like, I remember I tapped. I think it was Tory Crowd. I was like, Yo, bro, like I don't really want to be out here right now because we was up thirty going into the fourth. Any other, if it was a Wednesday, I would have yeah. been sitting on the bench. Yeah. The younger guys would have got in. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. it just didn't feel right. And there is a, there is a, something that comes from the games you have to play if you make it out of your bracket and you end up playing the top teams in the league five times. Yo. And then the other teams are playing lesser teams the extra time. And then you get to the playoffs and that one game difference. You know, in, the, in like in the East or the West, depending on the year, it can take you from three to six with yeah. tiebreakers. And so, but. We play they, at Indiana on Monday, but we got to, in January, we play them in Indiana on a Saturday and Monday. So we're going to Indiana three, three times, times this year in two months. And then the travel coming out of the NC tournament, y'all come back for one game and then y'all jump back to your West Coast trip after just coming back from Vegas. Y yeah, it's a little wild. Right, but. What what it has done for November for the NBA? Not for sure. It's like Amazon taking over Thursday night football, yeah. and what it's done for the for the viewership. I can see that. And so there is a. That'd be they always say it's about competition, but the financial ramifications are incredible for all parties involved. Yeah. That'd be lit if you can win an in season tournament, an NBA championship, and then like uh, all the, both the and then yeah, and then all the MVPs and all the MVPs, All Star Game MVP. All you got the record for. Yeah, I got. I got to ask won, you about I this. Won I won a Kobe year. challenge. Like I, I challenge won. You. I won the All Star Game MVP last year. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I got a question about that. You can't one. do it two years in a row. You got to chill a second. You won your own golf outing, and that was twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> twice. And they thirty seven under. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Uh, All Star Game. Going back to East West. You know, you've been a part of the, you've been an all-star like forever. We lost count. It'll be like 18 time all-star. But the rules change and the competition of it. How do we get the competition back? Because you and Jalen, I feel like kind of, y'all kind of had a great moment where yeah. two teammates going at each other, this competition, you know, and you know, and then other teams looking at it like, ooh, is there some real beef here? You know, like trying to use that. <laughs> but y'all just competitors. Y'all yeah. say a lot. Y'all play against each other all the time. Yeah. But how do we get that competitive uh, edge back into the All Star game. I think it's it's tricky because you know in the All Star game we the one year it was in Chicago when they went down to the wire like mm -hmm. I, that was my first All Star game that shit was incredible mm -hmm. like oh, I was there I think so. <laughs> but the years after that it's like everybody going through the motions and if it's close at the end. But it's like, it has to be something worth, like, because it's supposed to be our time off. And you don't want somebody to go out there, like, and getting hurt. 
So it's like, what are we playing for? Like, we we there putting on a show, you Steph shooting from half court, the dunks and all that is cool. But like, why, like, why would they, like, why would we play? Because you, it's your duty to the game. For sure. But like the, which I did with the in-season tournament, it gave us something to play for. Take 100,000 off the in-season tournament championship. So you get 400 instead of 500. Put that to the winner. Or give them watches. That I'll, that, yeah, you just, you know, no, 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 no. You know what I'm about to say? You know what's crazy? Give them AP. Okay. You know what's about to say? Yeah, I'm going to an AP thing tonight. Yeah, give them 12 of them. And, and there's an AP for the winner, special edition AP. And then there's Apple watches <laughs> for the losers. That's bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll beat the shit out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now is, hey man, pass the ball, fam. But now we get serious. No, that's real. <laughs> no, when I go home with an Apple Watch, I'm gonna be hot. But it's Shout like, out to 80Q, my bad. It's not like a real game. Adam Silver said, like, yo, the introductions are so long. Change all that. Like, nobody really got time to get loose, get warm. And then halftime show was 45 minutes. Like, yo, you be in the back chilling with your shoes off. And all star cracking and two nights before. So it's yeah. like So yeah. like I I do think changing east to west and like making halftime shorter, introduction shorter, make, what would make it feel more like a real game because it don't necessarily feel like mm -hmm. a real game. But you being the face of the league, like these are your MJ moments. And you I got 56, I was trying to go get it. All the numbers are inflated. I was gonna ask you about that, but you can score 56 acts. But this goes MJ moments. Like you are that, you're coming into that. And so you can galvanize the guys and say- No, for sure. Hey fellas, we gonna turn it up, all right? I'm busting all y'all ass. Cause you can do it like a joking manner and, and you're a very personable person. So nobody would take anything personal from you, but you can kind of turn that thing on. Like you taking, that's what I'm saying. Like this is the yeah. responsibility that comes with this thing. Like you, you can take this thing to another level. And I'll repeat before we end is if it's anything you need, please tell me we'll make it happen. And there it goes. Jason, appreciate you, man. It's been a couple years in the making. About time. Yeah, thanks for giving us eight hours of your time. We're appreciative, man. Charge it to the game. Charge it to the game. Oh, no, this is your, you paying me back for all them damn shoes I bought. I didn't bought like 10 pair of Jason Tatums. But when you send me an address. No, I, you did send my son some. I I'm sorry. Shoes. You did send some. I'm waiting on my watch. You waiting on his watch, my dude. I'm gonna get it. All right, I get it. You're gonna get your watch. Don't worry. And I'm gonna wait on my watch. I'm gonna get it tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Alley Boys watch. <laughs>